sir. Thank you for having us. Welcome. This is your father's yeah, house. Yeah, this is the house I grew up in. Yeah. You filed your certificate of candidacy. And it's the first time you're taking a... You're trying to seek a national position. How was it? Very exciting. Uh, a lot of people. And, you know, when I file for my last three terms in Congress, it's just a few supporters and there's no crowds in, in the Comelec, the local Comelec. Since you in it's for Congress, circus? you file in the local Comelec, not in the national. But here's the national. You know, there's a band. There's a whole... The national media is there. There's about 100 uh, different cameras. So it, it's uh, quite exciting, quite different. Because in Aurora, when you file, is is there such as not really? It's 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 just an empty office. You walk in and you fill up the form, and you have a few no media, you have a few no of cameras. your supporters with you, maybe one or two. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. But this is not the first time that you will be campaigning on a national scale, in the sense that you've been helping your father. Yes, uh, I would be a stand-in for my father, because when you run for a national campaign. There are simultaneous rallies all over the country. You'll have a rally in Metro Manila, you'll have one in Region 3, you'll have one in Region 4. So actually the members of the family were farmed out. My, my mother, my sisters, myself. This was 90, when he ran for vice uh, president? Well, my father's run in five national elections, actually. Uh, so each time? I was active in 98 when he ran for vice president, in 2001 when he ran for senator, and 2007 when he ran for senator. Because you are your father's son, have you always wanted... I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> have you always wanted to be a politician? Um, no, actually, no. I, I, when I was younger, I wanted to be a writer, a journalist, in fact. Um, you wrote as a business reporter. Yeah, I did a summer at, uh, at a newspaper, a daily, and uh, I, I would enjoy writing, you know. So I would read a lot then, so we always had a, wide, a big library. You'll see uh, there's a room here that's full of books. Any inspiration? Person, no? Wala, wala. Just, you just wanted to be a writer. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, you were for how long? You wrote? I, thought I was never really a writer. I, I mean, I had stints like where I, I wrote some articles, some columns, but, but nothing, nothing permanent or major. So you never really wanted to be a politician originally? No, I, my ambition in politics started, or my interest in politics started when I was in London and I studied history in England. And I would study history and, you know, we took up the House of Commons and Parliament and the great struggles and issues of the day. And then later on, when I went to UP Law, you take up constitutional law. And it's a really fascinating subject. When you take up constitutional law at a place like UP, it's really, it's really like a history of the Philippines, in mm -hmm. a sense, you know. The great issues of the day, the great personalities of the day, the positions and what the Supreme Court says about them. When you were campaigning but didn't really intend to enter politics, how did you see politics? Um, how did I see politics? Well, just, just what you see on the TV, I suppose, or read in the newspapers, largely. It, it's, Would uh, you say...? It's, uh, I never really appreciated the challenges and the time that it, that's involved in being a politician. It's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite demanding. It's challenging, yeah. Which part? Um, the dealing with different types of people, the dealing with the... With the uh, perceptions around you, uh, dealing with all the different views and the criticism, the challenges. I think it, it's, it's a, it, it requires a certain degree of equanimity or calmness uh, to deal with all of it. And so when you went to London School of Economics to take up international relations, what career did you have in mind? Uh, I wasn't too sure then. It was maybe a diplomat or a lawyer, yeah, mm. things like that. Because after LSE, you took up law. Yes. And then master's in Harvard. Yes. But I, I, I had a stint working at the United Nations, at the Philippine Missions of the United Nations. As a diplomat? Well, yeah, sort of. I, was, I assisted the diplomats there. I, I would write, uh, do research, things like that. Those, that education was maybe really for a career in the law. So, but uh, if you look at politics, being in a legislative position, that's an extension of, extension yun ng career mo sa law eh. Mm. Say you're, you're, you're making laws. Eh? There, you're advocating, you're taking positions in the law and hoping that the courts uphold your position. Dito, uh, ikaw na mismo ang gumagawa. So, nag-iba ka ng position. Tell us about those years when you were... You, you joined ACRA before you took up your master's. That's right. I started working at the law office in 2000 when I finished... Or 2001 when I finished uh, uh, taking the bar. Uh, it, 
I was a little surprised at how much work it was, honestly. Uh, what was your specialization, specialization area? I did litigation work. Law is it's, it's a hard, hard, hard career also, you know. Sometimes clients don't pay and you bill by the hour. <laughs> but I don't regret it at all. I think I learned a lot in that one year. And how was the day like? It starts early. Well, you start early because you have to be in court by 8 in the morning. And uh, sometimes you wait. Our courts are, uh, they don't, they just have your court case there and you can call it anytime from 8 to 12 so you don't know what's going to happen and it's, it's sometimes you could be waiting for an hour just to be told uh, it's postponed you know so, <laughs> yeah, it's not the most efficient system so but, and then the real work is is reading your, your case and preparing your defense uh, reading up on the law your defenses your uh, the law that would be supporting your case and you enjoyed this. Uh, legal authorities cases etc and you enjoyed being a lawyer um i did but um wasn't completely happy with uh, with uh, what I was doing. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> it's well. First of all, it it, it uh, took up it took up a whole lot of time. It's very challenging, but uh, there were certain things that I, I it wasn't the most efficient system. I felt there was a lot of time I wasted by just waiting for the judge to call your case. But could, still, you could. took up your masters. I did, but uh, most of my my courses at Harvard, hindi naman dealing with litigation. Ah. It's more towards uh, a corporate work and uh, advocacy already. So when you took up your master's, you had, um, you intended to go to politics already? Hindi pa, hindi pa masyado. In fact, you look at the, my choice, my course choices, a lot of them are uh, courses that would, hindi naman, wala namang silbi pagdating sa politika, you know. Uh, so how how did you decide your career path, sir? Well, there was a... Uh, they just asked me, the party asked me if I wanted to run in 2004 because uh, there was no candidate to field against the brother of the governor mm -hmm. then in Aurora, uh, Governor Ong. And I said, yeah, why not? I, I, it's earlier than I expected, but I, I think in politics, timing is important. You know, mm -hmm. you, if you don't uh, seize the opportunity, it might not be there later on. Yeah, it's 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 not an ideal. Uh, it's not a place where you go for the ideal. You go for what what's possible. What would have been the ideal? The ideal would have been perhaps to, uh, same as my dad, to build the, your career in law, make, become a partner, have achieve some financial security, mm. and then enter uh, the enter the world of politics. But like I said, it, it's it's uh, sometimes you have to seize your opportunities. To be clear, you were not forced into politics. No, Unlike, not at all. Not at all. Because there are a lot of, you know, children of politicians who are forced into politics, would later like it or, or right. not, maybe. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure there are. Yeah. So in 2004, you won and has since won two more elections. You're on your third term. Mm -hmm. how, how is it being a congressman? How is it being a congressman? <laughs> it's a very general question. How do you... Um, like I said, it's challenging being in politics, but it can also be very fulfilling, you know. I find it. I enjoy the work I'm doing because uh, I enjoy lawmaking. I enjoy uh, the challenges, the intellectual challenge, the of finding solutions to people's problems. Or I enjoy talking to people, uh, asking them about their lives. You know, it, it's 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 something that uh, that uh, interests me, and uh, I think I, I don't mind doing it. I think some people, not all legislators, actually enjoy. The business of, uh, they find it tedious, they find it uh, boring. But ako, I, I'm comfortable with it. Because that's not the, how, I'll, I won't say a lot, but that's not how some people would look at politics. Now, you talk about intellectual exchange, and there's a lot of criticisms against politicians today that they don't really um, work on legislations. Well, um, that's possible. That's also because maybe... The public has lowered expectations. The public itself don't want to hear about debates, maybe. That's, maybe that's why. I don't know, really. But uh, it could also be that the world is a lot more complex right nowadays. I mean, 50 years ago, you, you didn't have the internet. You didn't have um, all these administrative agencies. Like now you have the NTC, you have the ERB, and Energy Regula Regulatory Board. Politics is more complex. The world of, yes. of uh, public discourse is much more complex. Now. So tell us about... When you say you enjoy intellectual exchanges in Congress... Like working in the committee and listening to the experts and trying to translate sort of that vision into something doable. The committee hearings. Yeah, I think, I think the real work in Congress, honestly, it happens in the committee hearings because 
that's when you do your public consultations. You get you ask the people what they think of possible laws. That's when you talk to the experts. The experts who uh, will tell you it's a good bill or it's a bad bill. That's going to work. That's not going to work. People tell you we have the money for that. We don't have the money for that. I would see you in plenary. Quiet. You're not the type who would take the rostrum and deliver so many privileged speeches. Because uh, I know that there are very few people listening to them, actually. So I think much of it goes on, in, like I said, goes on in the committee. And that's where the, that's... a lot of the, except for maybe a few bills, like maybe the RH bill, uh, maybe the budget. That's where a lot of those debates happen in the plenary. But for other substantive matters, there's not, it doesn't because happen in the plenary. that's what's curious about you, sir. In the past three terms, you've not active in media interviews. You're not very active in plenary, I think. And it turns out you passed <clears throat> a lot of legislations, more than... Yeah. You can actually... It's easier to pass a bill if you don't give a sponsorship speech out loud in plenary. It's, uh, it's like calling attention <laughs> to, to everybody, you know? And sometimes it's better to just uh, make sure it, it's... Uh, make, do your work in the committee. Uh, make sure you answer all the questions, all the contentious issues in the committee. So when it reaches, by the time it reaches the floor, you settled it. And, and a lot of the discussion about like if there are objections, you also talk to the talk to the objectors behind closed doors rather than on the floor, because the the attention span of the plenary is just a few hours every day, Which and then is... and then you have people going their own way. So the media doesn't really cover committee hearings unless it's a. a but if you check the records, you 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 will see. That's one way of seeing. Uh, who's really involved in the that beast called lawmaking? Mm -hmm. Who gets into the belly of the beast? Who who just takes credit? Who just right? <laughs> who so. just takes credit? A lot of no, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm, I'm saying there's there's different type of legislation. Right? You can you can be involved in the actual crafting. You can be the type to leave it to the experts.